Number 26, the following image depicts what sonographic study? A, transabdominal pelvic, B, transvesical pelvic, C, sonohysterogram, or D, hysterosalpingogram? The answer is C, sonohysterogram. You can see the catheter which infuses saline into the endometrial cavity, and it is done with a transvaginal probe. 27. Myelomeningocele refers to A. Lipoma of the spinal cord B. Sacrococcygeal tumor C. Protrusion of the meninges and nerve tissue or D. Protrusion of the meninges alone The answer is C. Protrusion of the meninges and nerve tissue If it was the meninges alone, it would be called a meningocele. Number 28. What is the Doppler image demonstrating? A. Nucleotranslucency B. Nuke fold C. Nuke cord or D. Whirlpool sign The answer is C. Nuke cord The nuke fold is a posterior scalp measurement. The whirlpool sign can be seen with uh, torus organs or midgut volvulus. So this is C. Nuke cord The umbilical cord is wrapped around the neck. Number 29, the cisterna magna is considered enlarged at A, greater than 5 millimeters, B, greater than 6 millimeters, C, at 10 millimeters, or D, greater than 11 millimeters. The answer is D, greater than 11 millimeters. While scanning the BPD by parietal diameter, you notice an empty fluid filled cranium. The midbrain and brainstem are preserved. This is most likely A, hollow prosencephaly, B, anencephaly, C, hydranencephaly, D, hydrocephalus. So hollow prosencephaly is a fusion anomaly. There is usually a single ventricle or monoventricle. Fetuses with anencephaly usually have a flat cranium and which gives a frog-eyed appearance where there's a lack of brain tissue and cranium. Hydrocephalus is enlarged ventricles. So these findings most likely represent hydranencephaly, which is thought to be caused by a vascular insult in the internal carotid arteries. Number 31. Measurement from the outer edge of the occipital bone to the outer edge of the cervical skin is called A. Nuchal translucency B. Nuchal cord C. Nuchal fold or B. Biparietal diameter The answer is C. Nuchal fold Number 32. Causes of symmetric intrauterine growth restriction. A. Chromosomal abnormalities. B. Congenital malformations. C. Maternal drug use. D. Congenital infections. Or E. All of the above. The answer is E. All of the above. Some causes of asymmetric IUGR are placental insufficiency, maternal hypertension, preeclampsia, maternal vascular disease, and chronic pulmonary disease. Number 33. Which ectopic site is considered the most dangerous for the mother? A. Ovarian B. Ampullary C. Corneal or D. Cervical The answer is C. Corneal. This position can allow the ectopic pregnancy to grow rather large, and if it ruptures, it can cause massive bleeding. Number 34. In a case of fetal demise, you notice the cranial bones overlapping. This is known as A. Siegel sign. B. Cranial synostosis. C. Spalding sign. Or D. None of the above. So the Siegel sign is a celiac artery bifurcation. Cranial synostosis is a condition where the cranial sutures fuse too early. So the answer is C, Spalding sign. Number 35, oligohydramnios is most likely associated with A, posterior urethral valves, B, Potter's syndrome, C, Meckel-Gruber syndrome, D, premature rupture of membranes, or E, all of the above. The answer is E, all of the above. Number 36, this finding is A, hydranencephaly, A, anencephaly, 
C. Hypertellurism or D. Hypotellurism. You can see here you have the typical frog appearance. Uh, there's no cranium and it's flat above the eyes. So the answer is B. Anencephaly. Number 37. What does this image show? A. Pericardial effusion. B. Pleural effusion. C. Anasarca. Or D. Hydrops fatalis. So there's no picture of a heart in this image, so you can't see this pericardial effusion. This is a coronal view of the chest. You can see both lungs and fluid, a good amount of fluid around the lungs. So the answer is B. Pleural effusion. Number 38. You receive a patient with a very high beta ACG for her gestational age. Her ultrasound reveals the following image. This is most likely A. An endometrial polyp B. Missed abortion C. Hydatitiform mole or D. Retained products of conception The answer is C. Hydatitiform mole Number 39. Endometrioma may appear similar to A. Simple cyst B. Dermoid cyst C. Graphene follicle or D. Hemorrhagic cyst Dermoid cysts are very complex. Simple cysts are anechoic, as are graphene follicles. So the answer is hemorrhagic cyst. Number 40. This fetal lung is most consistent with A. Pleural effusion B. Sequestration C. Congenital cystic adenomatoid malformation or D. Normal lung The answer is C. Congenital cystic adenomatoid malformation 41. Fetal breathing must last for how long to score a 2 on a biophysical profile? A. 10 seconds B. 20 seconds C. 30 seconds D. None of the above The answer is C. 30 seconds Number 42. What percentage of esophageal atresia has a tracheoesophageal fistula? A. 60% B. 70% C, 80%, D, 90%. The answer is D, 90%. Number 43, an accessory placenta is also known as A, previa, B, circumvallate, C, succenturiate, or D, low lying. The answer is C, succenturiate. Number 44, which of the following is associated with holoprosencephaly? A. Monoventricle B. Fused thalami C. Proboscis D. Cyclopia E. All of the above The answer is E. All of the above All of these findings can be associated with holoprosencephaly. Number 45. The most common neural tube defect is A. Spina bifida B. Holoprosencephaly C. Anencephaly D. A. N. C. E. None of the above The answer is D. A. N. C. Spina bifida and anencephaly are the most common neural tube defects Number 46. Encephaloceles are commonly located in the A. Frontal region B. Parietal region C. Occipital region D. None of the above the answer is C, occipital region. Encephaloceles are cranial defects that allow meninges and or brain to protrude out. Number 47, what is the red arrow pointing to? A, intraventricular hemorrhage. B, choroid plexus. C, fornix. Or D, thalamus. The answer is B, choroid plexus. Number 48, what is the white arrow pointing to? A. Fourth ventricle B. Cavum septum pellucidum C. Interhemispheric fissure or D. Frontal horn The answer is C. Interhemispheric fissure Number 49. What structure is highlighted in blue? A. Choroid plexus D. Third ventricle C. Thalamus D. Cavum septum pellucidum The answer is D. Cavum septum pellucidum Number 50. This is an optimal site for measuring the biparietal diameter. A. True. B. False. The answer is 
B. False. There is cerebellum here and posterior fossa. For the biparietal diameter, you should be perfectly transverse in the middle of the cranium, having in your image the thalamus, cavum septum pellucidum, and interhemispheric fissure. This ends the second 25 questions.